Welcome to my video on comparing the AGM N6 to the CAT B40. Um, I'm making this video because um, I was watching one of Jose Brioni's videos and um, firstly he covered the AGM N6 a few months back and uh, very recently I came across a video of the CAT B40 and uh, in the video it appeared to me they were both extremely similar phones and uh, so I thought um, for science um i'll pick one up and compare them and uh i can see there's not that much out there online apart from the video that jose had done on the cat b40 so uh yeah we'll go and discover um so before i get into the details these sorts of phones are very basic they're dumb phones they aren't really capable of anything like an android like you can power them on they come on literally in seconds so it's really good if you want to sort of have it off and just power it on as and when you need to um the batteries last days on both as in like because there's nothing running so uh, it's basically got nothing to drain the battery as part from when you're sort of using it on the screen um and yeah it's uh they're both ultra durable as well like they're both built like bricks so uh you can well, probably use my Brits if you wanted to. I wouldn't advise that. Um, so yeah, um, the way I'm going to structure this is firstly, I'll cover the AGM going from unboxing, the whole experience, what it looks like, um, going through all the features, um, anything that might stand out like key features, maybe any bugs, anything that I find really useful. And then I'll do the same thing for the CAT B40. Um, and then at the end, I'll sort of go over my opinion of which one I prefer and why. But again, my opinion, your mileage may vary. Um, before we get into that, though, firstly, I'm going to bring up some tech specs and uh, because that'll be quite useful for reference just for some of the, the key differences. They're both quite similar, but differences there are. Right, so here's a feature table that I've built out um, with some of the key things that I thought would be useful to know. So you see, I've done the feature, AGM and the cat. So firstly, battery. AGM has a bigger battery at 2,500 milliamp hours, whereas the cat only has 1,800. AGM is heavier, surprisingly. I was quite surprised when I looked that up. Dimensions, both read pretty much the same. Cat is slightly longer, um, but it's, it's yeah, negligible. Onboard storage, um, AGM, only has 128 megabytes again though you aren't really going to be using that much storage on it um you're literally only going to be sending and receiving texts and calls there isn't really much else in the way of anything <laughs> i mean you have a tiny camera but we'll get through to that in a bit but um the quality isn't exactly something that would be taking up much space um on the cat it's four gigabytes which is pretty impressive sd card so both of them can take sd cards AGM is advertised as taking up to 128 gigabyte cards, whereas CAT B40 says up to 32. But I did know here they say it can be more, but it must be a FAT32 format. But also on the website, the wording sort of sounds like it's not guaranteed. So I'll take it with a pinch of salt. Headphone jack. So the AGM does not have a headphone jack, it's simply USB C only. Um, CAT B40 does though. so those of you that want to head my headphones that'd be good to know ip rating so so both of these are ultra durable so they can withstand a lot of abuse agm6 ip68 which means it's uh, submergible for quite a while in about i think it's one meter of water for 30 minutes or longer um cat v40 ip68 and also ip69 so um I think IP69 means it can be submerged for even more extreme depths or times and it is um, defined on the manufacturer's website. So I'm not actually sure exactly what CAT has defined as their standard, but um, yeah, it's better than IP68. Camera then, so AGM, absolutely like bare bones camera, 0 0.3 megapixels. Surprisingly, the CAT B40 has two megapixels. I was quite surprised by that. And finally, the price. Um, so this can vary. Um, when I got this phone, the AGM, it was just under £60 on AliExpress. It, it can go even cheaper than that. Um, 
and it can go more expensive. It's uh, because uh, that website tends to have deals that run at certain times, so you can pick it up pretty cheap. Whereas the Cat B40 is pretty standard at 69.99 at pretty much all the retailers in the UK at least. So uh, picked mine up from Argos for that price. Now that covers all the specs, so now I'll get on to the unboxing part. Right, so this is the AGM M6 box. So uh, firstly let's have a quick look. So you can see on the front it's got quite a funky multicoloured light and it's got the outline of the back of the phone which is kind of a shiny black. I turn it around to the side you can see some of the tech specs. So IP68, um, dual SIM and then it's got the weight and any, some of the other stats that we covered just previously. On the other side it's got the fancy AGM logo on it, multicoloured, very nice. Now then let's open it up. I have actually opened this up before which is why the phone isn't in um, its little uh, plastic bag which is just underneath it. It would have come in this originally. Um, so there's the phone, oh it's glory. Um, it's got a button layout that reminds me a lot of Alienware in the sort of style of it. Um, you can see it's got a function button on the side here, so you can press this. This will actually trigger the torch. Um, if you hold it down, you can also trigger the torch by holding the zero down. You can see it's a little torch icon there. Um, got a great grippy, grippy side on it as well. Um, you can see. Front you've got the torch, and in the back you've got a massive speaker, like ridiculously big speaker. Um, there's the camera, 0 0.3 megapixels. Whopping, whopping quality, um, and then yeah, IP68 and the logo. Let's have a quick look at what's left in the box first. So, right, let's open this up. So you've got two cables. You've got a fancy charging cable. Um, so this is actually um, on AGM's website, this actually lights up when you charge the phone with it. There's like little lights going through here and it's like gives the effect of electricity flowing through it into the phone. So that's quite a neat feature or quite a neat um, sort of uh, design. I don't know quite what the word is for it, but uh, like the experience, they've definitely uh, worked on that. And then you've got a regular USB cable as well. Um, around this uh, speaker you can see that sort of slightly grey bit, that's actually a light strip so um, when the phone rings that will actually light up and it will sort of give a pulse to it which uh, again is kind of why you've got the uh, multicoloured bit on the box there. The only other thing left in this box, so they do give you um, a USB-C to AUX adapter which is quite nice um, because of course the phone doesn't come with a headphone jack it only comes with a USB-C port in fact I can show you the USB-C port here it's just a uh, you can see that little uh, pad, pad there you have to get your nail right in it though to open it up and I've just got it there there you go so you can see that's uh, how it opens up of course, you got the protective port bit there so that it keeps the water out because it's part of the IP rating. So yeah, that's pretty good. So yeah, you can uh, connect your phone to the computer or charge it through there. You also have these two uh, metal um, contact bits there. You can buy a AGM specific charging port, a bit like a charging cradle for a home landline phone. And you can charge it without even having to open up this uh, protective cover here which is would be quite useful if uh, but again you don't really need to charge this very much because the the battery lasts forever so <laughs> yeah um, next I'll just um, take off the back because that is something you do to put in the sim card and also when you get this out of the box for the first time you need to put the battery in so I'll go for that right then to take off the back cover you just have to slide it so if I get enough grip 
I might have to do this with both my hands, so I might have to pause the video while I do that. Okay, so I got both my hands, put my press my thumbs on the back and just pulled it down and you can see it sort of comes down like that. And you can just lift it away. So that's just the first protective cravat cover. The next one is actually the IP protective cover. So here you actually have a little tab at the bottom there, which you can lift up and you even see there's a little instructions on it for how to get it off. Um, and you've got pieces, um, so you can see these six points here where you sort of push it in and it will make sure it's watertight. So as I lift this out, you can see the battery is under here. This is a 2500 milliamp battery. Um, it is nice that you can actually remove this. Um, that is very nice indeed. The only problem is, as far as I know, you can't buy any replacements anywhere. They don't sell any replacements. So it's a good idea if they sold replacements. But anyway, um, yeah, the battery would have come in this box originally. But again, I've already been using it, so it's not. And then you see you have SIM card number one, SIM card number two, and SD card reader in there. Um, uh, that is pretty much the physical inspection of the AGM. Um, so yeah, let's move on to powering it up and the features next. Just before I move on, I thought I'd clarify how the SIM reader actually works, um, as in how to put it in, because you, you might be looking at it and seeing, oh, that's a bit strange. So this is micro SIM it takes, and the way you do it is you just lift up this metal cover, put the SIM in, click it down, and it's the same for the SD card reader bit here. Again, same thing, you just put it in and click it down. Yep, moving on to features now. Okay, let's power it on, see how long it takes to actually turn on. So to power it on, you just hold down the red power button. See the AGM logo comes on the screen. Vibrates and it's as free as that. It is now powered on. It's picked up the time. And I've got a little bar of sim in there. So yeah, I'm a tight person. <laughs> um, now then, features. Um, so screen screen go off. Um, you can adjust the time the screen stays on before it goes off without you touching buttons. I've just put it as a I think five seconds ish. Um, you can also before I go into features, you can lock the screen. So you can press this red button. You heard the lock. I think they took that from a either iPhone or Samsung that sound. Um, you can quickly check the screen by pressing the red button. To unlock, you press this button and then the star key. By default, it locks as soon as the screen powers off. I didn't want that though, so I've just done it so it will lock only when I press the red power button briefly. To turn it off, you just hold down the red power button and it will turn off. Now then, um, I already said this, this orange function button, if you hold it down, it will make the torch go on, as you see. And then hold it again, torch go off. Same thing for the zero, just to show you, hold down, torch go on, and then the same thing again. Um, right then, on to the next bit of feature. Right, so we've gone through the startup and the torch, let's start going into the phone function. So um, you have cool logs, so basically you have nine things in here. You have cool logs, message, Contacts, multimedia, in fact, I'll, I'll sort of, I'll go through each of these, but just to show you quickly first, these are the nine. Call logs I'll skip because that is literally just call logs. Message, you get quite a few options in here. Um, you can see how the menu style is, so you have the number to the left of each menu item. Now, one thing I want to note here is there's a bit of a glitch with the phone. When you press one of these keypad numbers, it should go into the corresponding menu item that has a number against it. So I press 5, it should go to sent box. If I press 5 though, just nothing happens at all. 
I've noticed it's only on the uh, messaging sub menu that this doesn't work. Like the other menus all seem to work right when you press the keypad. Um, so definitely a bug, I think. Um, right in the message then, you can do MMS or SMS. Um, I've tried MMS a few times, but I think most people either have it turned off or it just yeah isn't working for some reason for me. I think it's the recipient I've tried so far just doesn't have it. Um, so to write a message, you have the, this is what it looks like when you write it. You can either put in a number here and just put a random number, or if you press OK, you can go into your contacts, scroll down, select a contact and do it that way. Um, for privacy reasons, I'm not going to go on my contact list, so, uh, but you can imagine how that'll be. Um, to describe it, you have a list of contacts, you have to check boxes, you can either type to filter down your contact using your keypad for typing, or um, you can just scroll and select one or more and then use this button to go into the context menu and do OK, and then it will fill them out in there. So actually type then, so you've got a few options to type in. Um, one of the main benefits of this phone is as predictive T9 texting. So you can see all the options if you press the hash key and then you see all these options here. So you can either do one capital letter followed by lowercase for the rest of the word, or lowercase, all uppercase, uppercase followed by lowercase for the rest of the word, and this is for tapping all the time, no predictor text, and then same context, and then numbers only or you can change the language. So numbers only, it will just be numbers and that'll be it. Um, to show you another bug actually, <laughs> this is typical, all these bugs coming. Um, if you do predict a text that's meant to start with a capital, it doesn't for some reason, or it does now actually, typical. <laughs> um, it wasn't before, that's, uh, that's absolutely typical. Maybe it's because I was doing it like this before. So if I just, uh, and I'm not actually typing anything that makes sense, I'm just trying to prove this. No, it's designed to play as it should for now. So <laughs> typical. Um, well then, so uh, <laughs> predictive text. So let me just give an example of how quick this can be. So let's just say I want to do it, type, I don't know, um, going to be late see you at seven so g o i n g and this is the other downside of uh, capital letter followed by lowercase it's for every single word it under text context such as when a sentence starts or ends unlike a nokia 1100 which is a uh, pretty crazy considering that's about 20 years old compared to this and yet this is not able to do that <laughs> um so let's just go over to this. So going to be late. And then add in the comma. So that's a number you just have to move across. This is another downside as well. Um, if you're selecting using these navigation buttons, it, the, the red button is right next to the right navigation button. So uh, this has happened more than once where I've been trying to select one of these suggestions and not the first one. And as I've done so, I've accidentally clicked that and it's gone right back to the <clears throat> to the main menu, like the, the main screen. So let's get back into it. Um, so it saves the draft, so that's a lucky thing. If that does happen, it will save to your message the draft, um, and then you can continue on. So then I just do back at seven. And you see that was fairly quick for typing, and uh, that is uh, a really big boon for me because I type a lot for uh, using my phone. I don't really call people that much, it's mainly texting. Um, and then, yeah, you can send it. When it sends, you'll get a little icon here when it's sending, and then you'll get a confirmation when it has successfully sent. Um, that is pretty much text in a nutshell. Um, MMS, I'm 
not really going to go into because uh, actually yeah I'll, I'll I'll show you what MS is like. Um, you have text, and you can attach a picture and music. Um, so then it will let you select it from your like saved photos you've taken, for example. And you just send it like a normal text after that, so you can put in text on with the photo. And uh, so long as your recipient supports it, it will send, it should send fine. Right, that is text and done. So on to the next feature. Okay, so we've done text in contacts, you kind of ignore again, that's just yeah, self explanatory. Multimedia, you got the camera, um, you can get some videos audio recorder which is quite useful so this is a really basic one I have tested it the, the quality is not bad it's not bad um, you can choose what option you want to save the file format in so WAV I've chosen by default I think it's mp3 and you have AMR as well um, the storage I believe you can choose an SD card if you have one in there and um, because it can support 128 gigabyte SD card, you you pretty much will be set if you wanted to use it for that. Like, uh, yeah. Um, you also have a recorded file list, so if you recorded anything, then uh, I mean you have the default. These are the default ringtones in the phone that you see listed here. Um, so yeah. Video player again. This would be a useful one for if you wanted to, I don't know, store a movie. On an SD card and then watch it on a plane journey or something again the screen's not ideal for it it's uh, pretty tiny but again if you really wanted to I mean they've given you a USB-C to headphone jack adapter so uh, in theory you can um, video recording again this year we use the that tiny 0.3 megapixel camera so <laughs> yeah it's uh, gonna be a yeah a bit of a blur um, images, which will be anything that you can see with a that you're taking with the camera, and finally the camera itself. So go into it. This is what the camera looks like. Um, it's really hard to show the quality on here. It's nothing special though, and also when you're taking photos, um, like if I was to take this as an example, it's kind of blurry. You have to be really still when you're taking the photo, or it will just blur. There's no processing of anything going on afterwards. You can either save it or go back and take another. And um, if you save it, it'll save to your gallery. And then I guess if you wanted to, you could set it as a desktop, as a background for your phone. Um, you can also go into your files from here. You have the radio. I think you have the radio on the cat as well. So these are all standard stuff. And yeah, files you can just go into anything you have. You even have a web browser, which is pretty crazy on here. <laughs> I'll, I'll go into that in a bit, though. Uh, yeah, so um, that is multimedia done. I'll also quickly cover dynamic LED circle. So this is to do with this thing on the back, the speaker. Um, so this phone is actually marketed partly as like a, the loudest phone you can get. It's ridiculously loud. Um, it's on like a, a six over 60 decibels this is capable of I'm not even going to try and um, test how loud it is other videos on YouTube have um, there's one guy I think that works in a a quite noisy workshop and he was saying that like he could hear it over everything so <laughs> it's ridiculous um, I'll show you though what the LED circle is like when someone calls you this is kind of a uh, a gimmick in a way but it's um I can almost think of the not no phone there was like a there's a phone that's come out very recently the the nothing phone I think it was that's got a very similar sort of idea with the lights on the back and they sort of want you to have the phone face down when you're not using it and then lights will come up all funky when someone calls you and you can tell who's calling um, so yeah, let's see what happens when I call in and uh, what happens to the lights. Okay, I'm just going to call the phone now. Let's see what happens. So yeah, that is a pretty funky light to be fair.
and I think if you adjust the volume it will like go around more. So yeah, it's definitely got a bit of style to it. I'll give it that. Okay, next feature is profiles. This one really quick. Um, you have a bunch of preset profiles. Basically what you can do is change things such as your ring volume, um, if you get a, a sound when you get a message for example, so you can have like a silent profile if uh, I know you're in a cinema or something and uh, it just adjusts the volumes and if it vibrates all that stuff in fact I don't even know if this phone has a vibrate option actually it does yeah it vibrates when it boots up so yeah um, that's what this is all for you can create your own profiles or use the presets like uh, you just saw next settings um, this one again it's pretty standard stuff a lot of this um, is just found in normal phones anyway like you have factory restore time and date all that stuff um, use the find keys is a useful one to know though so you can actually set um, three buttons from the home screen to go into certain areas you have um, so you have the left navigation key the right navigation key and this orange button on the side so if you short press it you can use that as a function button so you can see what I set it as um, so to give an example, I go back to the home screen, I want to send a message, press the left key, you get taken straight into your messages. Um, same thing if I want to go and see images, I just press the orange key short and you can see it strikes you into your images, which is really useful. Um, next display, this is uh, how um, So I've never actually touched this bit before, um, so uh, it's uh, this bit you can set a pin for when you um, unlock your phone for example. Connections, this bit is actually relevant later when I'm talking about the web browser so we can come back to this in a little bit. Um, okay, let's move on to the next bit. Okay, so you have tools now. There's a few tools, um, I can go over most of these really quick. Um, first one you have this torch which you've gone over, Bluetooth which you can switch on and share files or have a um, wireless headset. From what I've read the wireless headset um, option for this isn't exactly reliable, I, I may be wrong, that's just what I've heard, I haven't tested it myself, I don't really use wireless headsets, I only have, um, I have a USB wireless headset but again USB your wireless so it's not work for this phone basic calculator alarm <laughs> one drawback here is yes you have an alarm but there's no stopwatch or countdown timer which is quite disappointing um, because yeah if you wanted to I don't know use a stopwatch or to, like a countdown like if you wanted to use this as like a kitchen timer you can't there's no option for that calendar I find this one really useful um, so I've actually been using this quite a lot. Um, something that's really useful about it is I can simply go in, type a subject um, with predictive text. This can be really quick. So I don't know. I could say feed, feed the dog. It's as simple as that. Like, that's really quick to type, um, and it'd be quicker if I was using both my hands, of course. Set the time, set the date, and then you can choose the ringtone and whether it repeats. Um, for example, we can do like a, a bit like an Outlook appointment almost. Um, and that is, yeah, super useful. So um, that is a big benefit of this phone. Another thing to note on that is if you do have an appointment and your phone is powered off, it will still come on just to remind you about the appointment. It will still do its alert. So that is super useful that you can literally have it off in your pocket um, and it will still give you the alert. Um, so yeah, um, big plus with that. Uh, world clock, kind of a gimmick this one. You can set um, various different countries and work out what date and time it is wherever they are, which is pretty cool in a way. 
but you aren't really going to use it more than once. You just you just Google it if uh, you really care about that. Um, unit conversion. This is kind of limited. Um, you can choose between like I uh, don't know. I think it's yeah. It's, it's not that many things you can use to choose between. Um, but it's still, if it does what you need, then uh, that's fine. Um, now I'll break it off there and uh, do the another section on this internet browser. Okay then, the internet browser. This is a uh, quite a interesting one. So um, when I first saw this, I thought, ah, oh, nice. This will actually have a basic web browser, so I can like look things up on it. And it's half true. It is half true. So this is what the web browser looks like. This phone's actually on 2G right now. I've set it to 2G because I mean it doesn't like 2G. You got be I got better coverage of 2G in this area, and because of the way I use it, you don't really need high data bandwidth. So history, offline pages, and bookmarks. Um, I have bookmarked two sites that work. One of them is from a YouTube video on some guy that was reviewing the 3310 Nokia phone, um, maybe it was the 3330, it was like one of that type um, a few years back and he made a website that um, worked with it. You might be guessing why it needs a specific website now um, and let's go and see. See if you can notice something about the web page as it loads this. So <laughs> you might be able to see there's no cursor here. You just scroll, you can move between different links. It's WML. Yep, it's a WML only web browser. <laughs> so basically most websites don't work with this uh, web browser. You have Google, which for some reason Google still supports WML, which is really awesome. You can do Google searches like, I don't know, um, uh, define, I typed that wrong, <laughs> I don't know, what do I define, define the meaning of life, I don't know, define life, come on Google, tell me what is life, what is life? And yet, look at that, it's pretty cool. The condition that distinguishes animals and plants from inorganic matter. Well, who would have known? Who would have thought? So yeah, you can get basic information used in Google because Google still supports WML. Um, which is really awesome. I kind of wish more websites would still do that. You can even see basic images in there, so yeah. You can do some stuff, but the problem is, as soon as you try and go to any website that is not Google, like any of these results, um, it will just say page not supported. So if I go here, for example, it'll try loading it, and then it will say, yeah, 501 not implemented because no one codes for WML anymore. So it's a shame. It really is a shame. If the internet still supported WML, this would not be a problem at all because it's the web browser itself is fine, it's just the internet's moved on, so uh, yeah. One thing that I had to do as well to get this working, like it didn't work at all before, um, I had to go into settings, and this is where the connections come back, and in fact this to show you that this uh, keypad hotkey thing does work in other menus that you see, as soon as I type the number, so number six for connections, type it, it works. It's only the message in submit it doesn't work. So I had to go to network account um, and add a new account in and uh, this is so that Labara would actually work with the WML web browser. So I had to find this all online, you should be able to find it if you wanted to. Again I don't know how much you'd want to be using the WML browser, it's kind of cool. Um, and yeah then it worked. And um, that's pretty much the whole feature set of the phone. You have a music player as well. Um, again, if you had an SD card, you get a whole bunch of songs in there, 128 gigabytes worth. That would be uh, doing you pretty much for a few years. Um, yeah, this is the default background, by the way. 
Um, one final thing to say on this phone, um, there are some firmware updates for it, but I think that they aren't going to be going any more new ones anytime soon. I think the last one that came out was either February this year or maybe even longer ago than that, and I'm not seeing anything from uh, AGM or anything newer than that coming out anytime soon. Um, but yeah, the, the firmware update process, you plug your phone into your computer, they, you can download a tool. The instructions aren't exactly the clearest, but you can pretty much find your way around it. Um, and yeah, then you have an update phone. Up to you if you want to update it though, there's not much really that changes. I think the font size is slightly different on the, the up to date one, which is this one. But that's about it. Um, yeah. Um, and that's it, I think, for the AGM M6. So now it's going to be time to investigate the Cat B40. This is the Cat B40 unboxing then. So this is the box it comes in. So uh, you can see this rather than the AGM, which showed the back, this is showing the front of the phone. Um, kind of got a funky looking uh, pattern on the screen going on there. Um, so if you turn over to the side, you can see it says Cat B40 Hygiene Edition. Nice and clean. And on the other side, just got um, certain types of supported bands of LTE and sailor. Um, and then just a few little uh, disclaimers there. And uh, that's basically it. Um, if we open up the box, it looks very similar to the AGM. You've got the phone in there. Um, if I get that out. So don't come in a plastic uh, little bag thing like the AGM would have done. Um, if we have a quick inspection of the phone then, so keys, there's space between the keys this time. Um, it's much more sort of spaced out the keys, which I think is quite a nice, nice thing because, uh, yeah, one of the things the AGM was the keys are a bit sort of cramped together. Which is for, so like if you were typing you had the arrow key you might have accidentally hit the red button instead, whereas that's not such an issue here. Um, you can see on the side you have um, protective cover. This is going to protect the USB and headphone jack. This one's for the SIM tray. Other side, um, just grip. So you can see this phone has got grip, just like the AGM, except this one's kind of a finer rubbery grip rather than, well it's not rubber, but it's a sort of a finer sort of porous grip, I would say. And then on the back you have the 2 megapixel camera. Um, on the top you have the flashlight and you have the cat logo. Um, unlike the AGM, you cannot take the back off this and uh, so you can't access the battery or anything like that. Um, which have already made it a lot easier to make watertight. So I understand why I've done that. But again, still nice to be able to take off the back. Um, back onto the rest of the box then. Let's see what else is in here. So you can see it's tough. It's a tough phone. Let's open up. In here you just have the one USB cable. Um, USB-C again and other than that you just have a little SIM card pin and this gets the SIM card tray out I think let's put that there you have the manual and I, I had to look at this manual it is really really like minimal though it's basically just a picture of the phone and um, labels and then a quick bit on how to send a message, I think. Um, I have already had a try at opening up this SIM card tray on the phone. Um, again, it's so dark, you can't really make it out. There you go. But I haven't had so much success um, this far. Um, uh, before I try and force it, though, I just want to show you the other um, area, which is the cover for the USB port. And headphone jack so if I just yeah you can see that the headphone jack USB port 
Um, Jose, I think, mentioned this as well, but because it's on the side, it's a bit awkward if you want it in your pocket to listen to music because that's just not going to happen. So it's fine if you're watching a movie or something, but not so good if you're trying to use it as like an MP3 player in your pocket. That's not going to work. Um, I'm going to see if I can open up this uh, this SIM card protective cover bit now without breaking it. So uh, I'll be back in a little bit. Good news is I did manage to open up the SIM protective cover. So what I had to do is use this little SIM tool to actually get a little bit of leverage so you can see in here there's a little gap um, God, I've got two hands again. Um, just on the bottom bit there I managed to get some leverage using the SIM pin and sort of wedging it under there and pulling it up and eventually it did come away and so uh, you can see in here um, I might need to get some more light in a little minute maybe and so there's the actual tiny hole that you'd stick the SIM pin in to open up the SIM tray. So I'm going to do that now and uh, be back in a sec. Okay, after sticking this pin in the hole, it's got the tray to come out a bit and now I can put it the rest of the way. Hopefully, on video, with one hand. Let's have a go. Yep, you can see it's coming out. A little bit sticky but there you go so this is it you have two sim cards and an SD card just like the AGM so no worries there um, let me stick my sim card in now and I'll, I'll get this bit and uh, stick it back in so uh, sim card one I believe would go in the leftmost and then sim card two in the right and then yeah SD card there okay sim card is now inside the phone um, one other thing to note is this is a nano sim it takes rather than micro sim so I had to pop out um, as you can see uh, from the AGM I had to pop out from the micro size so it could actually fit in there. Now then mode of truth let's power it on. Nice sound effect. And of course, this is the first time I've used this phone, so it's going through first time setup. So, uh, yeah, English. And here it is. I'm definitely going to get a bit more brightness in this room. Bear with. Okay, I've got a bit more brightness in this room. I've always turned on the screen light a bit because it was extremely bright. And you can see it looks extremely similar to the AGM in the navigation there. Um, picked up the time straight away which is nice um, can't really make out that too clearly the time and date based on the background but that could be changed um, right let us see um, how can we turn on the torch can this be turned on using oh, here we go up key has a torch light thing on it let's hold it down and see yep Holding down the up arrow will turn on and off the torch. Oh, and in fact, I accidentally went into the music um, feature by not holding it down and just pressing it. So interesting. Up arrow, short press, and you'll go into music. Um, no function button, sadly, on this one. So uh, that's the only way that you can have that. Um, now on to the features. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start looking at the features then. So if we go into the menu, you'll see that there is quite a, a noise that could become annoying quite quickly. So I'm just going to turn that off before anything else. In fact, it's actually in profiles. So profiles are located here. I'll just turn this Not in there. Key tone, here we go. Much better. Okay, so starting from the top, you have contacts, which we will skip again. Message, if we have a look in here, you can see it looks quite different from the AGM. Um, so you have to go into options and then create a new chat. Now, 
you can start typing in here and it will start coming up with auto suggestion of contacts you can actually click the OK and go into your contacts list and select it a bit like the AGM and um, then here um, you can start typing now the diff there is quite a big difference here and that is there is no predictive text um, included in the cat b40 which is quite a blow um, it makes typing a lot slower so um, uh, let's say um, whoops I'm not used to using not predictive text so I say need to water the plants so need to water the plants so I mean it's not the slowest and the buttons feel quite nice because they're like rubbery and they feel more responsive than the AGM the AGM buttons are plastic and sometimes when you press them it feels like it doesn't register um, whereas this one it feels like it's always going to register which is nice um, and then you can just send it and uh, exactly the same story as with the AGM any drafts are going to be saved in here as well and um, there's nothing at the moment <clears throat> um, cool logs again we'll skip um, let's have a look at the settings then so you have cool settings which are exactly the same as AGM you have a few extra bits here so you have shortcut settings in here um, auto power off, power management, these are all the same this is a bit new so waterproof information what this does is it means if you have this cover open it will give you a warning message on the screen saying to shut it basically because it will be at risk of uh, getting waterlogged otherwise and at the bottom you just have the model it says B40 and it's got the firmware version on it which is uh, useful to know um, again this is a uh, standard stuff you can set how long the screen stays on for before it goes off key light keyboard pad backlight time as well um, you can make the font size big for example that could be useful um, Okay, profiles are exactly the same. You have more to select from by default though, so that's uh, that's nice. Um, connections, again, this is exactly the same as a AGM again. Um, and uh, one thing, again, this AGM does as well, you can set it to 4G, 3G, or 2G, or 1 exclusively, for example. Um, finally, Bluetooth, which again is exactly the same as the M6. Um, you can send and receive files and potentially use wireless headsets although I don't know with how greater efficacy right let's have a look at some of these other features then okay so you have the camera so if we go in here if I take a picture using this camera if I just you see the QWERTY is much more clear on there I mean it's still nothing special but Notice how it doesn't look as blurred when I took that picture, whereas the AGM that definitely had been blurred since I was moving it as I took it. Um, it automatically saves it as well. AGM, the M6 will give you an option to save it or discard it. Um, just a minor difference really. Um, and then with it, you can either view the image, edit it. I don't know how you can really edit it in here. So as wallpaper, let's have a look at the image editor. Wow, that is actually quite amazing that you can actually there's an image editor in here that is quite something I have to say I did not expect you to be able to do that on a feature phone um, so that's impressive um, so that's the camera apps so this is going to be like the tools of the M6 so uh, you have the torch world clock again exactly the same unit conversion again exactly the same as the M6 however here we have a stopwatch which is very useful wish the M6 had that so that's a win for the B40 music player video player exactly the same 
sound recorder looks a little bit different but it's actually the same you can see you can choose between a phone SD card file format again mp3 WAV or AMR and you can have a look at any recordings um, there's nothing on here um, no custom sounds location here at least um, and finally you have an organizer which has uh, a few it has the file browser in here you have ebooks I believe you can have ebooks on the M6 as well although I didn't notice an ebook option for reading but I did see an ebook area um, and then you have memos which the M6 does not have and this is basically for making notes um, that you don't want to be on a calendar basically which is useful and um, I kind of wish the M6 had it there is a workaround that you can do by just making draft messages in the M6 and saving them in drafts so it's you can work around that but it's still be nice to have had an area for it um, Right, you have an FM radio, again, same as M6. Clock, you have an alarm, just like the M6, but you also have a timer, as in like a kitchen timer. So you can actually use it as a kitchen timer, which again, very nice. Images, this is just your image browser, again, same as um, M6. Calendar, looks slightly different, but in effect it is exactly the same. You can if I edit it, you can see you type a subject, you set the date, set the time, ringtone, um, and then repeat mode again. And I've also tested this, and just like the M6, if you had the phone turned off, it will still come up with the alert for any calendar entries on the time that it's meant to come up. So that's useful. Um, let me just get out of this. You have the calculator, looks a bit different again, but in effect it's exactly the same. You just use the navigation buttons as your times, plus and divide and so on. And finally you have games. So in here you've actually got a nice little uh, set of games that you can play. So you've got dual jump on here for example. So uh, yeah, I mean it's not really something... Um, you'd be needing in the phone but again nice to have um, let's just look at some of the final things on here okay so one thing I was expecting with this phone would, was a hidden Opera Mini browser based on uh, some of the comments I was reading online about this phone and uh, if it did have that I think it would really give the AGM a run for its money however I have been looking at the way to find this which I've been told is in shortcut settings and you can map one of the shortcut keys to the web browser however I've been looking in here and there is no web browser option so I don't know if it's just the firmware that this phone comes with now or what but there is no web browser to speak of anywhere in here so quite disappointing to be fair because if it did have a fully functional web browser I mean the M6 it has a, a WML only which is pretty limited but again you can still use Google which is uh, you can still get bare bones information from that even if you can't actually see other websites so yeah very disappointed with that um, one benefit is you do get five shortcut mapping so whereas for the M6 you can only map three you could have left and right and then the orange so, um, like function key. Here you have up, down, left and right and also the soft key on the right which is currently mapped to contacts. You could set it to anything else. Um, other than that um, I think that's pretty much it for the um, the Cat 40 There is one final thing actually though um, which I'll have to show you in a sec. So you can see in here, when I plugged it into USB to a computer, it will come up with three options. Charging, file transfer, or USB tether. Now that actually shares its SIM connection to the computer that it's connected to, so it can actually use that as a modem. Which is pretty useful. I mean, there's no USB hotspotting off it, but, um, I mean, not Wi-Fi hotspotting even, sorry. But you can physically plug it in and use it as an internet connection in a pinch which is quite useful 
Um, the AGM-6 does not have that third option, so it can do file transfer and charging, but not USB tether. So uh, that's uh, one thing to note. Um, I think that is pretty much the main stuff. There is one other final thing, actually. <laughs> Never going to end. Um, the AGM M6 does actually come with a wall adapter for charging, and the cater Caterpillar does not. So, uh, in a way, you get more value for money with the M6 in that sense. You actually get two USB charging cables and a headphone jack adapter and also this wall adapter. So in that sense, yeah, AGM is looking pretty strong in that um, front. Just for curiosity's sake, I'm going to do a boot up test and see which one boots up first if I both power them all at the same time. So let's see. Yeah, AGM wins by quite a margin. That was completely unnecessary, and I know it probably wouldn't make much difference if somebody wants to buy it, but you know what? I'm just curious, so I had to do it. Right, so that was the inspection of both phones. Um, so now, for my past opinion, um, you might be able to guess based on uh, the outcome, but yeah, I personally prefer the AGM M6. Um, I mean, it's the funky lights, they definitely are nice. That's not the reason, though. Um, for me, there's two things. Firstly, even if it doesn't have a perfect web browser, it has something, and that's better than nothing. And two, it has predictive text. And uh, since I'm a text-centric person, that is uh, like a massive thing for me. Um, I mean, the, the cat, it, I don't understand why they would have got rid of the web browser. That's... Uh, yeah, that's a bit stupid in my eyes. Um, that's like, I can imagine a lot of people, like, even if you don't need a full web browser, just something basic so you can check the weather, for example, if you're out on a hike or something. So uh, that's, yeah, they're missing out a trick there. Cat, if you're watching, release a firmware that includes a web browser. Come on. <laughs> I heard about an Opera Mini. That would have been perfect if there had been. And uh, if that was the case, it would, I would have been hard pressed to choose between the AGM with predictive text or the cat with a proper web browser. Because other than that, they're both extremely similar. Buttons feel a bit nicer on the cat, but not to a crazy different extent. Um, you can see from this picture that the uh, that navigation button that is that is one of the downsides. It's a bit cramped, um, whereas again, spacing there is a bit better. The other ironic downside, though, is the cat. The the navigation middle button feels a bit small. <laughs> it's like slightly too small, so it's almost like you're pressing the the side buttons when you're trying to press the middle one. But yeah, it's like you can't win. Um, I also really like the fact that the cat has um, extra features such as the stopwatch and the countdown timer. Um, I'm quite impressed the fact you had an image editor as well. That was, yeah, I'm quite amazed by that. Um, but no, in general, the cat wins. I mean, you get more in the box as well. You get the two USB cables and the USB headphone adapter and uh, it seems like AGM have really sort of nailed their looks like the lights and uh, the style is just uh, I definitely have to say the AGM wins out in style um, but no it's all personal preference at the end of the day hopefully though you found it useful to learn that there isn't a web browser in the cat phone or if there is it's not in the new one it's only in the old ones to add all the firmware I have had a look to see if you can get all the firmware to like put it on the cat and maybe bring the web browser back, but I haven't found any firmware online for it. So uh, yeah, if anyone knows anything though, like um, I mean, you saw the firmware in the um, earlier videos. So if you go back and have a look and if you have a cat phone yourself and you have the web browser, maybe let me know what firmware you're on and uh, see if we can find something. But yeah, um, hopefully you enjoyed and found it informative. and. Uh, Yep. Catch you next time.